Hiya, uh, my name's James Lee and I'm going to be looking at a critical analysis of the Westside Barbell program, program for Strength and its comparison to Wendler's 531 program a few years later. So firstly we're just going to have a little look at Westside and Louis Simmons and just a brief description of um, the influences he had um, to get to Westside. So the purpose of the um, program was just to improve raw strength for powerlifting. Um, he had the influences from the 70s and the 80s from the Russians, the Bulgarians and Chinese. Um, and the volume was pretty much um, consistent on a certain day, so dynamic efforts. Um, he had 120 lifts on that day, um, and then max efforts was like 12 to 20. Um, so very, very volume driven, very consistent. Um, and the conjugate method um, is basically the, the changing of exercises um, every week. Um, So just a, a little brief microcycle, two max effort, two dynamic days, squat and deadlift on one day, bench on the other, and then a lot of supplemental and accessory lifts. So the supplemental lifts were looking at weaknesses in his competition lifts. Um, and as, I, as, I, as I've said, the main lifts weren't the competition lifts, so they were variations of that. For example, box squats, benches with bands, deadlift on a block, um, and a lot of the accessories were opposite muscles, so if he's doing bench press, he would do kind of rear delts, lap pull downs, blah, 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 to improve that. Um, and then the, the last bit was almost like a bit of sled work, um, prehab, almost like neck extensions, hammer curls to improve certain aspects of the lift. And then just to finish off on the bit of the information from the west side, um, Philpin's chart shows that um, facilitating bar speed was a huge aspect of um, Westside and Louis thinking. Um, having different percentages on different days would give you different adaptations. Um, obviously taking the max multiples from the Bulgarians, the Russians from their special exercises, he had up to 45 exercises. Um, and putting that all together in one program with a little bit of bodybuilding, repetition method, um, and becoming this ultimate program. So let's look at the critique part of the design of this. So um, from reading the book and looking into it a lot more, um, the clear thing for me was it's a very loose program um, in the sense of he looks at weaknesses of the athlete and you're almost prescribing the exercises yourself if you've got it off the internet, whereas he only classes people that are doing the real west side barbell is the, the athletes in his gym and that's obvious with this because he's making their decisions when they're with him everyone else in the world <laughs> the other 99.9 percent .9 of us are basically looking at our, our lifts and, and trying to find exercises that are going to improve that um, so my my program could be completely different than someone else's so it's very hard to then compare um, and that comes onto the individualization of it um, very individualised because the programs are like so drastically different from one to the other. Um, again, very hard to compare. Um, the conjugate method was actually a response to concurrent trainings. That was another point that, although that was a response, that's it's still a, um, a concurrent method as you're looking at different attributes, speed and strength um, and hypertrophy. So. For its purpose, it's given us aspects of strength training, but also doing bits that are not. Um, and then it comes on to the speed work. It's a massive discussion um, for that. Um, powerlifting isn't, doesn't have a time component, um, and Agard showed that we can get our max force production out in 0.7 seconds. Um, Gitsonus was looking at the ATP that was available, and we can reach that max force in two seconds as well. So that shows that we're looking at speed work, looking at improving speed work, but our max strength is going to be produced in the first two seconds. Um, so is that giving us any aspects of beneficial, um, any, benef any be benefits to cross over to our um, strength training? And then Van Custom, almost on the flip side of that, um, showed us that it can enhance monetary, uh, maximal voluntary contractions um, and doubles up the firing frequency 
from the speed work to maybe improve our um, max strength. So contrasting ideas throughout the years, let's go from 93 to 2002. Um, so yeah, something to think about. Um, one huge critique always is there's no max meat lifts in there. Um, so when they go to the meets, they aren't used to that. Psychological aspects of it may be a little bit tougher um, and just practicing a movement will obviously bring physiological and psychological benefits when doing a competition. Um, volume stays consistent, so that would be fine for a beginner, but maybe for an advanced athlete, they might want a little bit more change and variation in the volume. And then bands and change on the flip side of that, do we need that much bands and change for a beginner or an intermediate? Maybe for a really advanced lifter that's at the top of their game, but everyone else, do we need that percentage of bands and change? Because it's very heavy on, on that aspect. And then some other discussion critique points. Um, it's, had, it's got a very elitist reputation, the Westside Barbell program, but at the same time, when I looked at it, it, it was more suited to probably an intermediate um, due to its concurrent nature. The fact that it's got a lot of bodybuilding work and it's going to have obviously benefits elsewhere um, and the volume consistency would suit that lifter that's been lifting um, five or six years, ten years, um, but someone that's been lifting a lot more than that would probably, probably want a bit more um, variation. Um, the drug rumours is something that I really want to discuss. So. Um, a lot of Westside Barbell, a lot of people in powerlifting take performance enhancing drugs, um, and this obviously helps with the recovery process and will give them gains whatever program they're doing. So then when we are comparing programs, it's very hard to tell what level of um, the program is giving the gains and what level of the performance enhancing drugs is giving the, give the gains. So that, that makes it quite confusing and, and hard for a scientist. Um, and then the risks of the recovery process for that as well. Um, for a beginner, they're not going to recover as quick as some of these athletes. So if I got off the internet right now and I tried to do the program, I would not be recovering as quick as someone um, that's taking performance enhancing drugs. And that could have detrimental effects on performance and risk of injury. Um, and then the last point is that the conjugate method lacks um, specificity, but you're also going to get adaptations from it. Um, like I said, from staying consistently and trying to improve strength, we're, we're getting the purpose of the program out. So, why is it so successful? Um, with all these critiquing points, why are they getting so much success? And I've got four main points that I want to discuss. I think that the environment there that Louis created in, uh, uh, in Ohio is a small environment with a lot of quality rather than quantity. Um, and he makes sure that every athlete is trying to improve their weaknesses and programs them and that individualization point is that as well because he's there to give them the, the, the information that he, or the knowledge that he has with a very small group. Um, the drug aspect has to be discussed um, because it has a huge influence on performance. Um, and if you're not taking them, you probably wouldn't even be in the gym, in that gym. Um, so that makes it harder for people to get there. And then having the best athletes around you, he has these massive results which attract better athletes, and then them better athletes will improve their athletes that are already there because they've got the best in the world there to push each other. Um, so there's a lot of other aspects that maybe help with that success. So on to the 531 program. Um, this is a very simple program from um, Jim Wendler. Um, raw powerlifting for strength. Um, he has influences from Dave Tate and just simple compound lifting programs. Um, a max lift every three weeks at four, and then the four weeks of deload. So it's 531, deload, and then start to get. Um, the inclusion of military press, um, small increments starting off at 90%. And then the fact that on an off day, he is really key on just saying, do your main lift, don't worry about too much accessory. So this obviously has giant differences from what we've just discussed in the West Side. Um, again, competition lifts, plus the military press, an accessory, and then some conditioning through prowlers and sprints. And then a little 
example of periodization going up in 10% um, from week to week. So, on to the comparison, uh, the critique comparison. Um, lack of accessory movements from Wentworth's program um, will decrease the chance of hypertrophy, and hypertrophy obviously gives us um, opportunities to have strength gains. Um, on the flip side, the competition lifts and the lack of in Sims programs is a negative, so um, I feel like that's something to discuss. We've got quality on Wentworth's side, but quantity of um, exercises on and Simmons, but Simmons does get results. Um, so we can't ignore that. Um, when there's more um, suited to beginners, whereas Simmons is more suited to intermediates and advanced athletes, and that comes through his methods, and, and when there's methods are a lot more simple and raw. So just to finish off, I want to do a comparison, um, a concluding comparison, um, and discuss this. So I think that 531 lacks accessories, and I think that's key to mention. Again, um, the the hypertrophy aspect is huge, and if if they're not getting that um, hypertrophy, I think that will decrease the, the the opportunity to get strength and raw strength gains that both programs are aiming for. Um, and the psychological stimulation of both programs, I think, when there is on the brink of being very too simple, whereas um, Simmons is so interesting and so adaptable and um, the motivation must be high for them athletes because the buy-in must be so much greater. Um, the level of athlete is important, but then all three aspects, beginner, intermediate and advanced, could do Simmons and, and get benefits from it. Um, and obviously the benefits of being there would be much greater than trying to do it on your own. And then, yeah, that goes on to the factors of success of uh, Westside. There is so much going into the components of that success. I think that's key to mention that it's not just the program, it's the environment that they're in, they're creating an amazing environment to, for success and to push each other um, with having that level of lifter around in such a small group. And just overall, I think that Westside gives so much more to the athlete. Um, the the, the complement of the speed work, the strength work and the um, the hypertrophy gives it so much more benefits when comparing to the 531, um, and I think it'll have more success. Um, but very interesting discussion as there is a lot of critical points in, in both aspects, but overall I think that Westside would give, give more. Thank you.